That sound you hear is the great Midwest Conference creeping up on basketball. It could fill four seats in the big dance hall if the Memphis State Tigers continue to be the carnivores they have been lately. Anthony Hardaway makes everyone better, and right now he's becoming the crowd pleaser everyone at home. There's a renaissance going on in Cincinnati thanks to a coach who says his team doesn't really do a lot well. They just win. Cincinnati has used defense to trigger an offense that's put together their best season in 29 years. It's championship Saturday in the great Midwest. Number two meets number four. So far as the seeds go in the great Midwest, Memphis State and Cincinnati, but you won't find anybody arguing to the fact that these are the two best teams in this conference on this night. Hello again, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins. Once more with my partner, John Albright. And John, it's a given. Anthony Hardaway, a wonderful player. You're going to enjoy him. But it's been the two big guys who have really been getting the job done in this tournament so far. And Barry, I think it's going to be a war inside. These two guys, they played extremely well in the Great Midwest Tournament. Both of them had 20 points plus. When they're playing well, you can't double and triple team Hardaway, and it gives Memphis State an added dimension. Let's take a look at the lineup then for Memphis State. Hardaway, he can beat you on the offense, he can beat you on the defense, he can beat you shooting it, he can beat you boarding it, he can beat you giving it up. This guy's a pretty good player. He gets help from Vaughn Douglas, Madlock, and Smith. But Bob Huggins has done a simply brilliant job to bring Cincinnati. Outstanding. And he just gets better and better every year. The coach of the year. Their only four losses. Hey, against top-ranked competition, number 12 in the country. Very deserving. He's got a wealth of talent. Nick Van Exel had a big game last Saturday against Memphis State. Also had very important offensive scoring in the semifinal win last night. What's left then is to get on with it. We're about to do that right now. Hardaway will jump center with Blunt. And it's controlled by Douglas, who comes off a huge game last night and went over the ball. Barry, in the two earlier games, Cincinnati really controlled it and limited Memphis State to under 70 points. They got leads and were leading at half both times. The Tigers want to get out early offensively, put some offensive pressure on the Bearcats. Tigers are a team, though, that are clearly on the improve. A real key right here, they have to keep David Vaughn out of foul trouble. He needs to play 30-plus minutes. You're exactly right. Hardaway outside. This is the first try, but they go right back to the boards. That's how they beat the ball last night. Vaughn couldn't get it to go, and they'll have a third try. Madlock at the free throw line. He misses. They've been bageled for three times. And it still will be Memphis State's ball. That's a very important flurry because Bob Huggins' team clearly controlled the rebounding this year. 17 additional boards in the two games against these two teams. Smith has it knocked away by Buford. Just very good defensively. Cincinnati's a team you just hate to play against. They push you out of the areas you want to start on. Really frustrate your timing offensively. That's a well-coached team, and by the coach's own admission, not a great shooting team, but they will beat you on the defensive end. Vaughn controls it nicely as it's swatted away, but a foul is called reaching in. Nick Van Exel gets the foul on the baseline inside on David Vaughn. Cincinnati, sometimes they struggle offensively. When they get it going right, just under 80 points per ball game, but an amazing, they hold you to 63 points. Good looking. Six-year head, head coach at Memphis State, Larry Finch. Local product with the high school, of course, in the city of Memphis. Got a very solid uh, job on the Tiger Hill. Really has. This is a team that really seems to be getting better. I know you see them a great deal. And even since I last saw them, which was in the lost temple, they seem to be playing much more in sync. They are improving much so. The two key guys they rely on, Hardaway and Vaughn, now they've got pretty much a year under their belt. Madlock, the senior guard, really sort of the, the leveling force on this team, if you will. Vaughn gets them both. Again, Van Exel really had a good game last Saturday at Memphis. And a career high, 24 points in that ball game. He really created some problems for Memphis State offensively. Fast handed away. It'll be Memphis State's ball. Nelson might have just lost the handle on that. The two teams that got buys have had hard times. DePaul uh, had the first round off. They got bounced. And Cincinnati struggled for a long time against Marquette before they got it on track last night. Jones gets the pass to playing Anthony Hardaway. There's a turnover. Two on one now. Race to the basket. Van Exel protects with the body nicely. He's got it over the left hand. Again, it's the defense that gets their offense started. And there's a turnover. They do a good job forcing those turnovers. They rely on your mistakes. Bob Huggins up off the bench doing a little coaching. He's an intense competitor, and his team really typifies and magnifies their coach's character. To his credit, seven new players on this team, four new starters. He's really got them playing as a unit. Brought the JC transfer to the baseline. Nice little scoop move, but couldn't get the shot to go. 
And Hardaway with a rebound. Both teams will primarily play man. They'll give you a little zone and some pressure to keep you off balance. But primarily, when it's the half-court set, it'll be man-to-man -man defense. Again, look where Memphis State buries having to set their offense. Well beyond where they normally want that set. The top of the free throw line up there at the circle. That's where they normally want that offense to start. Significantly against the ball. The Tigers had no trouble making the entry pass. But today, the Bearcats just not allowing that. Bob Huggins made a point of saying, we don't want a slow down game. It's just their defense is so effective, they wind up in low scoring games. Van Exel outside, got it for three. That's a trump card. If he can hit that outside shot, that'll draw the defense out and open up some inside areas for the Bearcats to use. They leave Smith for the jumper, and he gets a three right back. And the confetti. Down low, and in a crowd was Buford. Loose ball picked up by Jones, who throws it up at a foul. And I think they're going to say it might be before the shot. Billy Smith on the floor, reaching in. That's right, Barry. Watch the activity inside. Strong move. Full out of control. Buford couldn't get it to go, but strong inside rebound. And Billy Smith took her, Herbert Jones out. A lot of contact in that paint area. These two teams really battle each other inside. Think about the Cincinnati team. True, it's not a great shooting team, but on any given night, somebody can jump up and score a lot of points. There are a lot of street shooters on this team. When you hold a team to 63 points a game, which is what they do, you're going to be in most games whether your offense is there or not. The nights when your offense is clicking, it's not close. Hardaway gets it ahead to Madlock, who leaves it for Vaughn, and Vaughn with the jumper. It's good. Let's take it back to the studio now. John Saunders with an update, John. All right, UCLA is closing in on the Pac-10 championship, and with it, the automatic bid. Let's go to Pauley Pavilion to join Phil Stone and Bill Walton. Last two seasons. One minute to play at Pauley Pavilion. Phil Stone along with Bill Walton. It was 46-46 at halftime, and since then, UCLA has methodically widened their lead, and they are now up by 12 with a minute to play. Don McLean will get his last ovation here at Pauley Pavilion. This has to be a very, very emotional moment for UCLA's all-time scorer, Don McLean. Nice little interchange there between Coach Herrick and Don McLean. Their relationship goes way back. He recruited him out of Simi Valley. Inside a minute, Don McClain, tremendous career here at Westwood. Mario Bennett's turnaround jumper won't go. Tyus Sidney. What a ball handler. Bennett picks up his third foul. Bennett not even a factor in the second half. And Bill threw no fault of his own. He sat on the bench for better than seven minutes. Why? I have no idea after scoring 15 points in the first half. Well, oh, the Sun Devils want to talk things over with 45 seconds to play. It's UCLA on their way to the Pac-10 Championship. And for the Bruins, it would be their first Pac-10 Championship since 1987. And you know what's about to happen there, Dick. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. They're going to celebrate a rough and trample over everybody. No, hey, it's amazing how they celebrate now over winning Pac-10 championships as opposed to winning national championships. They, but congratulations, great effort. They can't trample Walton like they can trample you. That was easy running over you. Oh, thanks, buddy. Big Walton there. Can't get that done. You guys feel this is the number one seed, obviously? Oh, no question about it. Said all year long, they're a great basketball team. Still, you have to point out how good is Duke that they went into their building, Pauley Pavilion, right, and beat them, you know, with the injuries they had. Jim, I really think it's important when you play somebody and, you know, at the time, it's so important. And when they played UCLA, UCLA was in that little slump. And I think now, mentally, they have it back. Plus, in that game, not to take anything away, certainly was a great win by, great win by Duke. But remember, in that game, a couple of key injuries in that game hurt UCLA. 
I personally don't feel UCLA is a team that can win it all this year. You guys? No, I think, you know what? I think that they can be a team. I think they can be a team that can be an early casualty of a really highly seeded team. I don't think so. Not this year. They're, I mean, they're, they're with the mission. Uh-uh. I hate to admit it, but I agree with Dick at this point. All right, Memphis State and Cincinnati all tied up at seven apiece. Of course, we will take you back to the great Midwest. But right now, back to Pauley Pavilion for the final seconds, Arizona State and number eight, UCLA. Could play basketball at the Division I level. Coach Wooden, of course, comes down and watches the team practice as often as he can. And Edney caught his eye. Edney very similar in his style to Mike Warren. Quick, beautiful looking jump shots. Jerry Zedek is going to come in, and there goes Tracy Murray. We'll see you next year, Tracy, 22 points in his regular season finale as the junior forward will take a seat. Next stop, the NCAAs for Tracy Murray. And right behind them, here comes Gerald Matkins. I find it interesting that Tracy Murray has surpassed Don McLean as the season's leading scorer. Bennett, oh, the first time we have seen him stuff one through since the first half when he had three stuffs. I think the zone defense turned the game around for UCLA. And, and I was shocked when I first saw it. I'm not a big fan of zone defense. Bennett gets away with a foul. Balance. He'll score. And, and Bill Frieder says, oh, great. So now you stop calling foul. Give him to Arizona State with 10 seconds left. Arizona State has nothing to be and Shane were embarrassed about this game. They played very well as Fontana throws one down. Final seconds. You can wake up the echoes. The UCLA Bruins are the undisputed Pac-10 champions of 1992. So much more control than when they piled on the floor and knocked over poor Dick Vitale <laughs> the other night. And he was trampled and calling, Ron, help me, Ron. But this time, they just stay off. They knew they were going to win it. The Pac-10 champions for the first time since 1987. Meanwhile, the Metro Conference semifinals, Southern Miss and UNC Charlotte in a battle. Tied up at 33 right now at halftime. The winner will face either Tulane or VCU. And the Southwest Conference semifinals at Reunion Arena, Texas Tech against Texas. The Longhorns in control, 121 to go right there in the first half, 44 to 35. Right now, let's take you back to Memphis State and Cincinnati. All right, thanks very much, John Barry Tompkins, along with John Albright. 10-7 to 7 ball game here at Cincinnati leads. And probably the most significant goings on since last we spoke was the fact that Anthony Hardaway has picked up two quick fouls, and that really could be a factor, John. He's one guy the Tigers cannot replace on the floor. There's too many good things. And at the other end, Cincinnati taking advantage again as Blunt with a basket to finish. Now here's the problem. You get down against Cincinnati. They're so good at defensive end, you start panicking and not taking your time. There's that trap, and they get Blunt reaching in. That's a tough call, because Smith did give him an elbow. Looks like a pretty good trap right across half court. That's exactly where Bob Huggins wants to set the trap. Here's the break. Nice teamwork. Gets it over to Blunt. Nobody back for Memphis State. That's an easy two points. And again, when Cincinnati gets that lead, they're so difficult to play catch up against because they're so solid at the defensive end. Huggins pleading verticality, that word you only hear in basketball, but it's not a bad argument that he has right there. Here's another turnover. And here comes Buford, three on three, they'll back it out. Tigers have gone to his zone. Turnover Tigers. both ways as Jones unable to hang on out of the basket. Cincinnati's looking for that half-court trap. Once you break the half-court line, don't pick up your dribble. You're inviting the trap, and then you've got additional defenders. Want to keep that ball moving ideally in the middle of the floor where you've got options. They give you a lot of different looks defensively, too. See, there's that the problem again. Yeah. Once you break it, you've got to look to attack offensively because you've got the numbers now in your favor. Make the defense pay for gambling. Bad luck. And then the lane could get the roll. Fawn falls. Solid follow-up by David Vaughn. He's got six points early on for the Tigers. Memphis State now, they'll go three quarter court pressure. Both teams rely on pressure as a very important part of their overall game plan. Nice give that time. Blunt has it rejected by Vaughn and gets it back and puts in the jump hook. Good follow up by Blunt. Didn't uh, 
let the block intimidate him, stuck with him, got the bucket. See, that's where you got to attack. Ernest Smith had a chance, decided not to. They get it to Vaughn. He pumped fake and got it down. Of course, that's a nice option, too, on the other side of the baseline. Boy, Vaughn's a nice offensive player. He's starting to play with a lot more confidence. He came out early in his freshman year playing very well. He, too, has gotten himself in a lot of foul trouble. We'll talk a little more about that. Buford misses a long three. It's over the backboard. It'll be enough to stay small, trailing by three. There's a look at Larry Finch. He has done, as we said earlier, just a marvelous job with this team. And he has an awful lot of talent on this young team. It's always interesting, an offensive player in his day, yet he's a defensive-minded coach. Smith in the corner. A one-point game. Well, the Tigers not panicking. They've done a good job being selective at the offensive end, not forcing it. That was the hallmark of their win last night against DePaul. Every time DePaul made a little bit of a run at him, another turnover, we're going to go the other way. Every time DePaul made a run at the Tigers, the Tigers managed to come back and not only get their lead back, but stretch it out. That's what Larry Finch said. Every time they had to have the answer, which in a run means a bucket to silence the crowd and also to slow the other team down, they did have the answer. Vaughn's going to take a seat. And Jeff on Scott the will come on for him. And so too will Terrence Gibson, who comes on for defensive purposes. They call him instant defense. You can play defense, you'll always have some minutes in a game see the turnover. Cincinnati relies on points off turnover. They got four. They get 27 points a game off the opposing team's turnover. That's pretty impressive. Again, tough defense by Jones, but they call him for a push. That's happened right in front of Bob Huggins. He just smiled. So we got a timeout. 11.48 remaining first half. And Cincinnati leads Memphis State by one. We'll be back. Is Michael Richardson slashing through the defense for two? Now we're going to take a look at Michael Richardson going up, up, and away. Slam, jam, bam, flying through the sky. He's bigger than Texas. Even from the studio, Texas leads by 13. Barry and John. All right, thanks very much, John. One point game here, and really it's been defense that has been the story of this game so far, John. One of the reasons Cincinnati is a 12th ranked team in the country is because they do fundamentally things, fundamental things very well. Defensively, look what they do. Excellent, the steals and the turnovers, and they only allow under 64 points a game. Again, when your offense is not clicking, these stats will keep you in a game and give you a chance to win. Well, the team shooting it very well. You can see Memphis State on the sixth love run over the last minute, but both teams shooting it right around the 38% mark, and that's caused by good defense. Hardaway, who hasn't scored so far, still hasn't. You're gonna get Matlock with a foul. That's a tough call. That's it looked like he had call. a lot of leather. Sure did. Memphis State, first goal. A holding call, number 20, Tony Matlock, his first. The team Again, the Tigers, this time they'll go man-to-man, -man, stretching it out three-quarter. Now they'll go to the three-quarter court press. So set their offense up deep. Scott gets it in the corner. Van Axel open, but doesn't take it. That would have been a wrong two. Jones to the basket, too short. Vaughn the rebound. This is where Hardaway's got to realize, quit being so unselfish. He's got to get himself involved offensively. Not the empty pass down to Douglas, but he forced the shot a little bit. Nice play by Hardaway again. Cross court Douglas underneath for the basket. Counter to go to the line. That's one of those things that Hardaway just does so well. Sees the floor, had the open man, and you could credit Hardaway with what could be a three-point play. You're exactly right. That's an intangible the vision. First of all, to spot the player. Then more importantly, to execute the difficult pass. Look at that. See what he does? The newcomer of the year, first of all, and also the most valuable player in the league. Well, typical night last night. That, again, he influences the game in so many different areas. Truly a special player. All right, Finch really wants him to take more shots, as you alluded to a little while ago, but he's such an unselfish player. And in fact, I thought it was interesting when you and I were talking about Huggins earlier today. He said he's probably more dangerous when he beats you by giving the ball up than when he beats you by shooting it. He enjoys the decoy role and does it quite well. Jackson in the game with the point guard spot for Cincinnati, and right away another turnover. And that's where they want the ball, right there with that man. Well, we expected a war, and neither team has disappointed. Well, these are two very good teams, playing at a very good conference. Top 
part of a really uh, good first year. Five to six teams will go to postseason play. Have a good defensive move. Nice move to the cutter that time. Martin to the basket. Good job by Cincinnati that time in transition. They made Memphis State pay for not getting back quickly defensively. Eric Martin, one of three players on this team out of the state of California. They're trying to slip out of that back door. Look at how much contact inside. Again, Cincinnati does a very good job denying you position offensively on the floor. They push you four and five feet away from where you normally want to set up. It throws your timing and your rhythm off at this end. Douglas with Martin in his face. Fall away in and out. The rebound, Jackson. Jackson, the penetration to give to Jones. Floats it up and in. Count it. Put that off the top of the glass and in. That's the second straight time Cincinnati's gone full court. Nobody gets back to stop it. Strong move by Herb Jones. First team all conference that time with the bucket. A little reaction. Yeah, you bet he's excited to play for the championship. And David Vaughn picks up his second foul. Hardaway and Vaughn, both with two fouls. And that could really be a factor. And that has been the story of Memphis State's season, actually. When they can stay out of foul trouble, they do pretty well. Here's Bob Huggins. You can see the coach and the player is about to come into the ball game. Last minute instruction. The other thing you got to remember, Cincinnati, this is only their second game. They had to buy in the first round. They are a deep team. They go nine deep. The Tigers got to play three games in three straight That's days to win it all. And Anthony Buford comes in, replacing Herb Jones. Buford, of course, ought to be familiar with Bob Huggins' system. He played for him at Akron before Huggins came over to Cincinnati, then transferred when Huggins came to Ohio. Full court press right now by Cincinnati. Billy's picked with a one-man press break. Not the fundamental way you want to do it, but he got it across. Make those passes. Beat the press with pass. Then you got the numbers at the offensive end. This is where it's very important for Madlock to step up to be a leader with Hardaway on the bench. They got a second chance. And Smith, the leader, and it won't go. Third try. Douglas finally gets it. So again, going to the offensive boards pretty well is Memphis State. Douglas, I think, the most improved player on this team from last year to this year. He doesn't say much, but he does a great job inside. Blue power worker. Doesn't look for a lot of publicity. He likes playing on ESPN, doesn't he? And he does. He lights it up on national TV. Jackson just looney to play point guard. Gibson missed a long jumper. And the second try by Martin. No basket trap. Pretty good sticky defense by Memphis State. It's their end. But the pace, Barry, I think, certainly to the Bearcats' liking. Larry Finch would like to see this thing get into the 70s. That's where his team really excels when they get those numbers going. Full court pressure, and it does the job yet another time. We mentioned that Cincinnati gives you a lot of different looks. They'll pressure off of almost every made basket, but sometimes it's full court, sometimes it's half court, sometimes it's three-quarter court. It makes you make a lot of decisions. you got to think out there. Now, again, Hardaway's on the bench. This is where Tony Madlock is the point guard. He's got to step up and assume the leadership. A lot of pressure, but he's got to be the guy now to get everybody in their positions. And where they need to be on the floor. It's again, liberal substitutions by Bob Huggins. He will play nine players consistently. Now, that ball did not touch anybody, so it'll be at Cincinnati's offensive end. If it had touched somebody, it would have been in their backcourt. Down low nicely to Scott, and he's fouled. I believe they're going to get Smith. The Philly variety picking that one up, reaching in. His second Scott, another seven. transfer, and they have a lot of them on this team. We mentioned Buford coming over from Akron. Scott started out at Miami of Ohio, then went all the way out to Santa Barbara. And before he played there, he came back here to Cincinnati. Hardaway back at the ballgame, remember, with two fouls. That's a good move, I think. You don't want to get too far down to the Cincinnati team. Plus, with the pressure, he really can take some of that press away because you can't get right up on him because of what he can do in vision and distributing the ball. So Scott, who gets a lot of his minutes primarily because he is also a good defensive player and can't emphasize 
When you talk to Bob Huggins, that's what he talks about, defense. That's the first thing. Again, that's a fundamental uh, thought, but it keeps you in games when the offense can come and go, but that's going to keep you in the game, give you a chance to win the last five minutes. Buford way outside for three, too hard. One and done, and the rebound down to Douglas. You talked about the fact you don't want to have to play catch-up against Cincinnati. Here's why. When they get it going extremely well, they lead the great Midwest Conference. They have 16 points differential between what they score and what the opponents score. Hardaway posting up this time, and they're going to get Jackson pushing Hardaway. Now, that's a good move by Memphis State. Jackson is 6'1", Hardaway is 6'7". This is one of the additional problems that Anthony Hardaway presents. He's quick enough to guard a guard. Yet, if you guard him with a traditional guard, 6'1", 6'2", you post up down low. Jackson's got to hold on to prevent the foul. Now, if you go to forward, he's normally quick enough to go around to forward. Really presents a lot of problems defensively. He, he gives you the same kind of problems as a Magic Johnson. And believe me, it's premature to make those kinds of comparisons, although they have been made. But he does give you those kinds of problems. He's a, he's a gifted player. Got to bulk up, though, before you get in that uh, category. Oh, yeah, I don't mean to even imply. Oh. Smith got too far under trying to reverse and did draw the foul. That's one of the few times you're going to see Cincinnati give up the baseline. And Larry Finch liked the attacking that time. But as Billy Smith saw the baseline open, and when an offensive player gets that baseline, there's problems for the defense. And that's how they have to foul to stop it. Martin and Jones will come back into the Cincinnati lineup. Scott will sit. And so will Buford. Uh, it'll be Gibson who sits. So Billy Smith will go to the free throw line. Billy Smith and Anthony Douglas, teammates in high school. That had to be an exciting uh, a team, and it was. Smith's a streaky player. He can really line it up from the outside when he gets going. Good three-point shooter. Gets them both. And we'll take a timeout. With 7.51 remaining first half, it continues to be a one-point game. High-intensity game, Cincinnati and Memphis State. A lot more to come from Chicago. Miss and UNC Charlotte back underway. We'll keep you updated later. Back to the game. All right, thanks, John. One point game here. Cincinnati and Memphis State. 7:51 left and a half. Neither team shooting is very well once again. But it's not just errant shooting. It's good defense. At the risk of being redundant, that is the case. It has been. Both teams extremely uh, gifted in that area. And, and David Vaughn has really picked up the scoring for Memphis State. You see what he's done so far. Also, Anthony Douglas with some points. You got to remember, Vaughn only had 10 points combined in the two games in the regular season against Cincinnati. He's almost done that in the first 20 minutes. And All so this with Hardaway pitching a shutout. No points for Anthony Hardaway. Oh, exactly. The only way that Hardaway is in the statistical column is two fouls, and that does not bode well. But he does a lot of things that don't show up, and he has in this game, too. If he's not scoring, he does not stop playing. You're exactly right. Continues to influence the game in other areas. And he is a guy, I promise you, will be a factor. Madlock with the steal. Will he take it to the basket? Yes. Knocked away from behind. Buford, good defensive job trailing the play. That time Cincinnati with two guys hustling back to contend and challenge Tony Madlock after the steal. Good job by Madlock. Watch him come from the backside. Nobody sees him in time. Now this is where the tendency is to relax and concede this. But two Cincinnati players come after it. Buford finally puts it in the stand. Blunt with a rebound off the missed shot. They get it ahead right now. Jones for three too hard. Long rebound comes down to the hands of Smith. Either team has the chance to go on a run and really take control of this game. It's gone back and forth. It's time for one team to make a run now and open it up. Vaughn fouled by Blunt from behind. And that is going to be... That'll be the seventh foul. Vaughn will get the chance to go to the free throw line. And that is the second foul on Blunt. So, Mr. Scott... 6-10 for 6-10. Although Scott not nearly as offensive-minded as Corey Vaughn. Vaughn a big contributor on the offense tonight, as you said earlier. Rather that one in, his ninth point. Well, again, it just gives you that different dimension. Now you can't line up and really cheat and help so much with Hardaway. His game's going to come around. But Vaughn, only a freshman. He's been up and down a little bit uh, this year, but the last four or five games really playing well. Vaughn gets them both. And the Tigers take a one-point lead. 
And you see, that's important rebounding. Again, during the regular season, the Bearcats with a 17 rebound advantage. And also, the Tigers have not allowed that turnover category to get out of hand. Tigers just dominated the Bulls last night against the Paul. I mean, dominated. They were plus 22 in the rebound. Jones, an off balance shot won't go. That's going to be out of bounds off of the Tigers. It'll be the Bearcats' ball. And when you dominate the backboard, it takes so much pressure off having to shoot a high percentage. Look at the Tigers packing it in the paint area, contending everything. Good action. Couldn't quite come up with it, and the Bearcats are going to have a crack at it. Oh, well, remember, this is a Bearcat team that is not known for its outside shooting, and so they can afford, they feel, to pack it in a little bit. I'm not sure we can get any more bodies in the, the paint area. Everybody active inside, and the Tigers finally come up with a foul. We're going to call it on Allen. Tigers personal 31, Kelvin Allen, his first of the team. First personal foul on Kelvin Allen. The other guy who comes in there predominantly for rebounding purposes as Gibson comes back for the Bearcats. And Buford will sit. Bob Huggins is talking to Anthony Buford right in front of us. Put the bear hug on him this morning. Went to the bench. Spun him right around. That's a good point, though. Get your point across before the player sits down. Has a chance to think about it. And Jones gets them both. He's got 10. Quiet 10, but 10. Hardaway to Vaughn. Vaughn missed the shot, went down hard. And a rebound to Jones. Again, yeah, Hardaway's got to get some points now. He's still pitching a shutout. They need for him to be involved offensively. Where well, you got to take it over and put some shots up. Cincinnati will be very patient. They'll get a high percentage shot, not force it. They do a good job of taking what you give them and waiting until that break comes. Good ball movement. They reverse the ball well, move well without the ball. They'll get it from the baseline. This time to Martin, who actually threw up a bad shot, but they get a second chance. And this is the third straight possession where they've gotten more than one crack at it. Jackson outside. No, on to the right side. Scott fighting for the rebound underneath with Douglas, and they're going to get a foul on Allen, actually, not Douglas Allen. Jeff Scott battling inside, keeping it alive. Even though he couldn't control it, he does a smart thing. Keep it alive, somebody else may have a chance to come up with it. Kelvin Allen thought he had good rebounding position inside, felt that Scott came over his back, as does Larry Finch right there. And Ron Zetcher says to him, that's enough, the next time I'm going to get you. I like when the referee does that, actually. You do. You, you push it so far, and then you say, Coach, any more, and we're going to slap you in the tee. But this is also a point of emphasis as far as Larry Finch. He's also doing that to make a point with officials, but also to make a point with his team. Guys, we've got to have a little more effort. You must block off and seal off. Cincinnati's doing it with second and third opportunities. But Scott at the free throw line. What Larry Finch did do, though, was get the crowd into it, and there's an awful big contingent here from Memphis State. Some folks from Memphis have certainly journeyed uh, north here to Chicago. Cincinnati also in good contingency. The Tomb of Doom, its mobile location here in Chicago. <laughs> Remote. In the full court press. That's a good job by Matlock. Don't go across until you're ready. And he, and he travels. For another turnover. Cincinnati just gets you thinking so much. They get you playing quicker than you want to play at, and that's something that the, certainly the Tigers have done a good job up to this point. It also messes up your rhythm and timing, particularly if you want to go coast to coast, full court. Here's another steal this time by Madlock, and again a race to the basket. Madlock floated it up and in and drew the foul on Jackson. Big time play by Madlock. That's a good job by Maddox. He just made the turnover. He atones for it very nicely coming up with his deal. Now, that's a time where Cincinnati and, and Alan Jackson, you've got to back off. There's no chance for the block. The time before, Buford got there with a nice block. This time, the foul and the three-point opportunity, which gets a chance for Memphis State to tie it all up again. Madlock after his first basket at the line. They're trying to convert the three-point play and tie this game at 24. And does. Tigers with their full court pressure. That 
See, such an eight breaks it with a pass, Barry. That time, no wasted motion, dribbling back and forth. A couple of easy passes, and the press was broken. Almost across the line, but saved nicely by Gibson. Jones pulls up. That's a two. That's a big play that's on very close to two turnovers on that play, yet they come up with a bucket and another steal. Gibson with another big play, but Jones can't handle it. Great play, though, by Gibson. Here's Madlock, two on one. Give it up to Doug Eleven to Smith for the basket. He's hammered by Scott. And that's a good job by Memphis State. Getting in, in transition to the free throw line and then an opportunity. Number 50, Jeff. Well, a reminder that at halftime, we'll tell you about what's going on down to the Southwest Conference. A shootout going on down there and a buzzer beater bonanza. I think that's easy to say. Tell you all about it at halftime. John Saunders in the studio. But you did that well. Got through it, hit the cold, too. Huh? <laughs> Very neither team has been able to run away from the other one. Every time somebody gets a two or three point lead, a big basket come at the other end to bring it close. We expected a close one. Certainly, we've seen that here in the first half. You had see Charlotte getting back in it after Southern Mississippi had started to run away. Texas, I'll tell you, I think Texas is a very good team with Dexter Cambridge now. They're a very different team than the one that played the middle of the season without it. Well, they had a great run last year and got it going. You're talking about pushing the ball. Don't have to worry about the 45 second shot clock with no, the defenders. No. Getting in the passing lanes, good hand for defense. Gibson with the penetration. Give it up to Scott for the jumper, and it won't go. Martin tries to keep it alive, batted around, comes down in the hands of Gibson, who stepped on the line. On the baseline, but again, Cincinnati getting more than one crack at it. They break it down. So we've got a timeout, 357 remaining first half. It remains a two-point game, but it remains being played at Cincinnati's tempo. Southwest Conference semifinal game. Texas is in command, about 15-plus minutes to go on that one. And Metro Conference, Southern Miss and UNC Charlotte in a tight one. If it stays this tight, we'll take you out there. Right now, back to the great Midwest. And Barry Tompkins and John Albright are standing by as we take you back to Chicago Stadium. All right, thank you very much, John. We are in Chicago. A few snow flurries here today, but right now a beautiful evening, as you can see. The inaugural Great Midwest Tournament. Meanwhile, neither team shooting the ball particularly well, and that's been the story of the whole game. In fact, it's a little bit worse this time than the last time we told you about 32% for both teams. But again, you could attribute it to outstanding field goal percentage. Both teams playing very well defensively, but rebounding where Cincinnati's got a six-board advantage again gives them more opportunities, more cracks at it. Good move that time by Hardaway inside. Martin's going to pick up the foul, and Hardaway gets a chance to go to the line to get his first points of the ball game. His first and Barry, I think if you're Memphis State, you've got to be pleased. You're only two down, yet your leading player, Anthony Hardaway, just under 18 points a game, has yet to score, and you're only two out of it. Yeah, and you, don't you know that Larry Finch at halftime is going to say, you've got to shoot the basketball a little bit more. You know, I, let me just offer this to you. Hardaway could just be so concerned with beating the press, getting the ball across the timeline, that he's just forgetting about shooting the basketball. He has a tendency in the first half not to be as focused offensively. In the second half, when the game's on the line, he starts to assume more of that offensive leadership role. And you're right, that's something at halftime will be pointed out to Anthony in the locker room. Well, Hardaway gets him both. And again, we are tied at 26. We talked about the low shooting percentage, and really it's not that the teams are shooting the ball badly. It's just that they've, they're taking so much out of their offense. Plus, very few shots are conceded by either team. Normally, there's a defensive man right in somebody's face. The Tigers going to go to a zone look. 2-3 zone right now. The one thing you're concerned about is rebounding position. Sometimes in a zone, you assume somebody else is going to block out a man. you got to make sure you pick up somebody and block him out. Jones from the corner makes him pay. That's a two. He's carried the offensive load in the first half. 14 points for Jones. Madlock calls out a set play here. Set 
Cincinnati returning the favor in the zone defense. A little more matchup from Cincinnati. And they drop down on Douglas every time he touches the ball. It's a matchup, and they're playing. Look at them extended out. They're challenging up top. Got six seconds on the shot clock. And they don't have a sniff of a good shot here. Two seconds, and they turn it over. Great defense by Cincinnati. That's good ball defense. The man on the ball, he's got the pressure, but everybody else in the passing lanes. Cincinnati with the ball and a two-point lead inside of 220 remaining in the half. Tigers back in man-to-man. -man. Nice look down low to Martin, who couldn't get the roll and the rebound down into the hands of Hardaway. Kick out for Smith for three. And Jones the rebound. One and done for Memphis State lately. And Cincinnati starting to get that rebounding edge that they had in the first two games. Bearcats, excellent job sealing off on the defensive boards. And it's been tough for Hardaway. There just have not been any open shots for Larry Finch's star. And that's something in the second half. They've got to get him 10 to 12 shots in the second half. Martin really asking for it down low against Anthony Douglas. Now he gets it, but he gets it out in the corner, and Douglas puts a body on it. Gibson open for three. They're having all kinds of problems from three-point range. Good block underneath by Vaughn. We talked about verticality, and that's exactly what that was there. Excellent job, and it'll be uh, the Bearcats ball in the possession. But look where the shot's coming from. It's getting too easy inside. Now, he's asking for it down low, doesn't get it. Now he's going to say, I'll scoot out and give it to me out there. A couple of big bodies banging at it. Gibson gets into the lane, kick out for Scott for the jumper. Too hard. Did everything right except make the shot. And we're going to get a foul. That's positioning that time. Martin got inside position on David Vaughn. That'll be Vaughn's third foul in the first half, and that comes with less than one minute to go. That's very, very tough to swallow, because now he's going to start the second half handicapped, not going to pick up that fourth foul, but it was all about positioning. Martin got the inside position on David Vaughn. Allen will come in, and Vaughn will sit for the remainder of the half. Scott goes out, and Nelson comes back for Bob Huggins' Cincinnati Bearcats. That also makes you a little tentative offensively when you come out not wanting to pick up that fourth foul. Smith back in the ball game. And Anthony Hardaway will sit for the remainder of the half. He's got two fouls, and I'm sure that the last thing in the world Larry Finch wants is for him to pick up a third in the last minute. And only two points in the first half. They need to get him on track, involved. Two points both at the free throw line. Martin can't convert. Got to have a little more arch on that shot. That time a little more line drive than the Bearcats would like to have seen. And that, that means you're tired. When that's a flat shot, you're tired. When you play the, the hard defense and pressing style, you're going to get tired out there on the floor. A little better job that time on the arch. One out of two, three-point game, 56 seconds remaining. Cincinnati was doing what they wanted to. They had disrupted the offense. At that time, Martin a little too aggressive for Bob Huggins picking up the foul. And Kelvin Allen got a chance to go to the free throw line. But the trap was working ideally. Billy Smith picked it up, and then Allen was coming to the corner, which is, again, a natural trap area for that press. Yeah, what, Bob Huggins spends 40 minutes a game coaching, doesn't he? I don't know why, first of all, he, he wastes time with a jacket as much as he's bending and moving around, and there's no reason for him to have a seat on the bench, because he certainly doesn't spend any time there. He's got a seat right in front of us, I'll tell you That's that. Right. He's very animated, though. He's an intense competitor, and you can just see that in his, in his players' faces. They really contest you on everything. They don't concede any inch or any part of the floor to you. They're a team that doesn't beat themselves, Barry. You must beat the Bearcats. They don't beat themselves. Very well-coached team. Both these teams are very well-coached teams. Nick Van Exel has come back into the ballgame. And he has sat for a long time. 
Vic wanted us to wish a happy birthday to Ciara Van Exel, his sister, living down in Atlanta, Georgia, and watching tonight. But all in all, a pretty good hand for Memphis State. Offensively, they struggle, yet they're only one down. A chance to certainly go to the half, the closest they've been at the half all year against Cincinnati. They're down by 6 and 10 in the two earlier meetings. About a two-second difference on the shot clock and the game clock. And they will run it down, I'm quite sure. Well, the thing here is you want to make a shot go up. You don't want to wait until the shot clock's down and then foul somebody. Make them earn it from the floor. That actually spins into the lane. Douglas got a hand on it, and it came right down into the hands of Martin for the gimme basket. They got one second. Got to get it up in a hurry. It'll count, but it won't go. And we have come to the end of the first half with the scoreboard showing the Bearcats 31 and the Memphis State Tigers 28. It has been a defense-predominated half. We're at Chicago Stadium, 20 minutes of basketball left right now to the studio. And this is the final they advance to the championship game. And in the Southwest Conference semifinal game, Texas Tech is down big now. They had it to about a five-point game, about five minutes to kill. But right now it's 12, 90 to 78. We want to get you back to the great Midwest. Memphis State and Cincinnati to Barry Tompkins and John Albright. All right, thanks very much, John. Well, the score remains close here, 41-38. Chance for a three-point play here by Blunt as he goes to the free throw line. But the biggest story of the second half, at 16-20, just three and a half minutes into the second half, David Vaughn went out with his fourth personal foul. And 35 seconds later, Amphrey Hardaway went out with his third personal foul. So they are both on the bench now for Memphis State. And they will do well just to stay in this game until Larry Fitch can bring one or both back into the game. Those are two weapons you don't want to be silenced sitting down with you on the bench if you're Larry Fitch. And right now he's got to play a time thing. Keep it close for the next four or five minutes. Douglas, the leader, soft with that and won't go. And a second try, Nolan in the lane. Kind of thought he might have some company and he was very tentative with that shot. Didn't play any minutes in the first half, so now he's got to get it going here in a sec at a crucial time when he has to be uh, uh, very focused what he's doing. Nice look from Van Exel to Martin on the baseline. All right, you got to be careful now. It's a six-point deficit, and if you're Larry Fitch, you got to think about it. He's looking for a timeout. They don't see him. That is the biggest deficit by either team in this ballgame. Biggest lead by either team, six points. And again, you don't want to have to play catch-up against Cincinnati because of the defensive pressure that they put on you. So they'll call timeout, talk about it. And I wouldn't be surprised any more buckets to see him put some of his key players, probably Hardaway, who's got three fouls back in the game. He may wait a little longer with David Vaughn. And he's on the bench, as you said, with four fouls. And a significant factor in the first half, of course, was how well Cincinnati went to the boards. Well, they had a seven-board advantage, but 15 offensive rebounds in the first half, and as poorly as both teams shot. Again, credit the defense with the, the reason for those low percentages when you're getting uh, uh, additional shots that takes some of the pressure off having to shoot a higher field goal percentage. And Smith can't get it to go. The Tigers need all the help they can get right now. You see uh, offensive boards, Cincinnati up, but yet it's Memphis State that's converted more. There was a bigger gap at the halftime in that category, so Memphis State's done a good job here in the second half in lowering, uh, actually taking uh, the lead in that category. But going with a smaller lineup now, Allen at 6'7", Douglas at 6'7", they're two biggest players out there. Well, now you're just trying to get it to the eight, nine minute mark. You're just trying to run time off, stay within shouting distance until you can get your guns back in there. Hardaway, incidentally, still with just one basket, and he's only taken four shots in the game. He did make a basket on a two-on-one two -on -one fast break early in the second half. And this is why him sitting down is even more tough for Memphis. That's a big bucket by Van Axel. Very big, considering they were not getting it done at the perimeter. They only had five backcourt points in the first half. So that basket by Van Axel, a big one. Now, Cincinnati does a good job wearing you down, and right now we're seeing some of that. Hardaway's going to check back in. I think that's a good move by head coach Larry Finch. you got to go with the guy that's going to keep you in it. And Hardaway's the one guy that can keep him in this game. Still plenty of time, though. Only an eight-point margin. Plenty of time to get back in it. Have you heard John Saunders, Jim Valvano, Dick Vitale talk about the fact there's no automatic bid out of the Metro Conference, no automatic bid out of this conference either, but they are thinking they could conceivably get four teams in. Nice rejection, and here come the Bearcats. And if you believe uh, in the runs, you're seeing one right now. Cincinnati taking control of this game the last 2.30. And that's been because of Hardaway and Vaughn sitting on the bench in foul trouble. And another excellent look that time by Buford to Martin on the baseline. 
Good job. Memphis State's going to take a timeout. The Bearcats seizing control of this one, Barry. Yeah, they really got it going now. Ten-point game. A chagrin Larry Finch and with good reason. 13-24 remaining in the ball game, and the Tigers are going to have to find something that hasn't been there for the last two and a half minutes. Cincinnati by 10. You don't see too often. Texas Tech and Texas. Benford Williams on his way to the hole for the layup. The ball decides to lay down. Stays there. Texas is up big with 11 seconds left. Barry and John. All right, thank you, John. Ten-point game here, Cincinnati over Memphis State. As poorly as Cincinnati shot it in the first half, that's how well they're shooting in the second half. Seven for 11 from the floor. That's been a big reason why they've got a 10-point advantage here in the second half. And, of course, the fact that Hardaway and Vaughn have been on the bench for all but three and a half minutes. The run came, you're right, when they sat down. And Anthony Hardaway back in the game there. they got to get him involved offensively. He's got to put some shots up down the stretch for Memphis State to get back in it. Only taken four in the entire game. And one of those really was on a two-on-one break. But he just happened to be on the wing and finished it. Cincinnati zoning right now. Really challenging. A matchup zone. Again, there's no easy shots out of this. you got to get more ball moving. You can't do it with the dribble. Must be the pass. Force the zone to react to you. And right now, everything just avoiding the pressure, not looking to get in scoring position. There's a good pass. Down low and a good rejection that time by Martin. Well, Martin's really been a factor in the second half. Now, that's one of those, you got to take it strong, expect the contact, create the contact. That time, Kelvin Allen was surprised by Martin getting up. He really has been a factor off the bench for Bob Huggins in the last several games. Been in double figures off the bench the last seven games, but defensively is where he's getting it done tonight. Job spreading you out, making you again think defensively, running across those picks, and they'll be patient until they get a good shot. That Axel got the baseline, could get the floater there. So they got, got the numbers, you got to convert now. Well, they didn't push it real quick, did they? And now on the follow up, it won't go, and the rebound down to Martin again. That's a shot where you got to get your angles and you got to be going to the bucket. They had four guys on the ball here in the backcourt, didn't convert out of it. The opportunity jumper is up, but good that time by Gibson. And now you're in the trap. You're 13 down against a very good defensive team. You've got to take some chances, and normally Cincinnati will make you pay for those chances. And another turnover. Man down at the other end. They won't stop playing because it's not affecting the ball. Van Exel won't go. Hardaway the rebound. Get back, get back. Here's another break opportunity. Douglas the trailer, and he can't get it too hard. Threw up a brick. And here comes Gibson. Gibson travel. It's one of the few things the Bearcats have done wrong, Barry, in the last five minutes. Everything that they've done at the offensive end has come up correctly, and defensively, that zone, that matchup zone, has created some problems offensively for the Tigers. Jackson comes back. Stanford still looking for a shot into the NCAA. I think they are a gimme. They're beating Oregon State. Mr. Keith can uh, do some very nice things uh, at the offensive end. Great player. And if he gets any help from any of his friends, then they could be a pretty tough team to contend with. You see Douglas, he looked at the official and said, can I move? The official said, no, you better stay right there. And he planted it. Hardaway for three. They get a second try underneath, and that shot is rejected nicely by Scott. And here come the Bearcats again. Well, the Bearcats' interior defense has been superb. They're picking it up. That filter is over in their offense. You can see the intensity come right over to the offense again, playing with much more confidence. Buford the floater, it won't go. When Nelson got in the air, couldn't do anything with it. It's out of bounds to Cincinnati. Now, this is also where that third day, where Bob Huggins, this is only his second game. He got the bye, the finishing second in the regular season. He's played two games. The Tigers having to play three. This is where you can really pick it up. You see where Hardaway, 18-point average in the tournament. And yet he's only got four. And Douglas also, who's been a big factor in the or two earlier wins, has been shut down tonight. That's the call timeout. That's probably a good timeout because he was in danger of a five-second call. Bob Huggins says, what are you doing? What are you doing here? 10.55 remaining. 13-point lead now, Cincinnati. And it has all happened when David Vaughn went out with his fourth foul. We'll be back. Invitation Tournament tips off with a live triple header. Wednesday night starting at 7.30 Eastern only on ESPN. 
All right, key games in non-tournament matchups. UCLA wins the Pac-10 title, 85 to 77. Ohio State clinches at least a share in the Big Ten. Indiana plays at Purdue tomorrow. They need that victory. And in the Southwest Conference semifinal game, Texas Tech a loser to Texas. They go to the final. Back to the game. All right, thank you, John. And here, where it is not an automatic berth, both these teams very likely to get into the dance, but Cincinnati right now really showing its strength. Defense is where it's at. Good job by Scott inside. Turns it around, and it's transition time for the Bearcats. Tigers will go zone, 2 3 zone in the out of bounds play. David Vaughn is going to be back in the ball game now. And I don't believe Larry Fitch has any choice. No choice. You got to go with everything you got. All your artillery now has to be used. With him sitting on the bench, the Bearcats went on a 15 to 3 run that really opened this game up. Nelson going to jump in. Got it. Hey, the Bearcats like playing in the inaugural tournament. They won the first two Metro titles in 76-77 and a chance to keep that streak alive here in the first great Midwest Conference Championship. Hardaway gives it up nicely to Allen who tracks. Duncan that time, one too many steps and he's not normally a guy that's in the mix right here and you can see the reaction from Larry Finch. He normally comes in defensively, not expected to, to contribute offensively, yet no choice now. Full court press right now by the Tigers. They need some turnovers out of this pressure. Close to a 10 second call, just barely beaten. And that's number four on Hardaway. And that was a careless foul right there, too. Here's what disrupts you. Look at that trap right there. You pick it up. Now you got fewer options. Everything is to avoid the pressure. Again, Duncan unexpecting the pass. Really not comfortable at the offensive end. One too many steps. And Duncan at 6'8". There just in for the size factor. He is a senior, but he hasn't played a lot of minutes this year for Larry Finch. Tiger start out in the 1-2-2 look. and go back to the 2-3. Rupert can't make a play. Gibson runs down the long rebound. this time with a penetration and a reverse layup. You can see Cincinnati looking really much fresher. They are really attacking it right now. The Tigers just can't seem to have to find the answer. Good steal right there by the Bearcats. Another bad inbounds pass and good defensive position by the Bearcats. A miss in the three-point shot that time by Buford. See again, the trap is slowing up the Tigers' transition. And finally, they're going to down Duncan that time. Almost brought the ball down too many times. You really don't have time to wait for the pump fake. Just explode up, expect the contact, and create it. And that's the way it's been going for Memphis. The second half it banged off David Vaughn's legs. It'll be the Bearcats ball. Well, a point that you talked about, Vaughn needs a lot of minutes. He's a guy that really needs to play 30-plus minutes of ball game, but he's had a tendency to get in some foul trouble this year. Typical of a freshman up and down season. He's got a lot of natural talents to be a very good player. But right now, the Bearcats really picking up the intensity. Everything's going right right now for Cincinnati. The only two losses they had in the conference were to DePaul. The other two losses, Michigan State in a last-second shot, and then Indiana at home. This is a very, very solid Cincinnati ball club. And the way they play defense, I'll tell you, this is another one of those scare card teams that you just don't want to draw in the first round of the tournament. Well, this is Memphis State's been averaging in the 80s in this tournament. They've only scored 41 points, and you got to attribute a lot of that to the Cincinnati defense. It really is highly competitive postseason tournament you have to think this year Duke uh, I believe a cut above but beyond that you almost think anybody can beat anybody well I think the pressure and I've said this before I think Duke is the most talented team in the country they certainly made a strong case today by dismantling Georgia Tech but I think the pressure of being number one day in and day out I just don't think they can repeat and playing on a new kid court and everybody is suspect but they made a strong case today it'd be interesting to see the Tar Heels and the Blue Devils one more time they're pretty good, and you heard Dick and Jim and John talking about the fact they went out to UCLA. UCLA looked very good this whole week, beating Arizona and Arizona State. I remember Duke went out there, and they were, that was a hurt Duke team because they didn't have Grant yet. They go out there and beat UCLA and UCLA. That says something about how good Duke might be. Got a lot of weapons, a lot of ways to beat you. 
I want to remind you, the championship week will continue tonight, the WAC championship. UTEP and BYU a little bit later, then it's Sports Center, and then out to the Big Sky, Nevada and Montana. Montana's another one of those teams, frankly, that I think is a team that you look at in that first round matchup and you say who, and then you say, uh-oh. Yeah, about the 10-minute mark, you look up, you're trailing, and you wonder, who are these guys? And they're playing in the second round, and you're headed back. Vaughn makes good on it. That's the interesting thing, Barry, about this Memphis State team. The two key players for Memphis State, David Vaughn, a true freshman, and Anthony Hardaway, a sophomore, both first-year players. So there's some very encouraging things for years ahead for Memphis State. And they're in the NCAA tournament, so this team will get another opportunity to play after tonight. Incidentally, that Big Sky Conference championship game will be on tape. Live on tape, as they say, which I, again, I've always equated to fresh frozen. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, live on tape. Beautiful shot that time by Jones, falling away with the left hand. Cincinnati just swarming right now all over the offensive glass, really looking comfortable and confident. Again, another trap. Can't pick up that ball down low. Vaughn can't get it off the left side, and swarming is the off of the world defensively for the Bearcats. really thinking about the good shots that Memphis State has had in the second half, and they've been few and far between. They had a couple transition opportunities that they really didn't finish off like they normally are capable of, and when you get those transition chances, you got to make them. It also gives you a chance to get into your full court pressure. We were talking about Bob Huggins earlier today, you know, about whether or not he uses the history, and there's a lot of history in Cincinnati in talking to some of his potential recruits, and uh, he said, no, you know, kids nowadays weren't even alive when the great teams in the late 50s and early 60s. This is the best Cincinnati team, David Vaughn for the basket. Best Cincinnati team in 29 years. That's a long, long time. Well, uh, quality, not quantity, I guess. It gets better with time, but you're right. The Bob Huggins has done a super job of reviving the, the proud Bearcat tradition. And they've been ranked consistently all year long and are going to get a chance to be a pretty good seed in the NCAA tournament. Nice give that time by Nelson to Jones and missed the jam but was hammered from behind by Duncan. He'll go to the line. Jones with 18 points so far tonight. But Jones came up with a point in the first half to keep Cincinnati on pace when they really were struggling offensively. Yeah, what you really have to like about this team, it's a very unselfish team. They're always looking to give it up too. You see the numbers, the Tigers struggling, and again, you have to credit a lot of that to Cincinnati's defense, but the Tigers, they had some good shots, but unable to convert it. But this is what Cincinnati has done all year long at the defensive end. When you hold teams to 63 points a game, you know you're playing very good, tough, solid defense. They break you down, and it's really a battle every time you play Cincinnati. You know, the other thing I liked in talking to Bob Huggins today, we were asking him about defense and how he gives, he likes, he says, I like to give you a different look all the time. He says, it's like fishing. If you ain't catching anything, don't just sit there. Move. <laughs> well, they've done a lot of moving uh, here in the second half. Made all the right moves. Caught a lot of fish. That one wasn't even a forced turnover, but that's just what happens. That's as quiet as you're going to see Bob Huggins. Right now, wants the offense over and over. This is not a deep freeze. It's too early to put the offense in a deep freeze with better than six minutes to go. But you run your offense over and over. Be selective. The last eight, ten seconds with a 45-second shot clock. Then you look to score. Unless you're Herb Jones, you always had the green light there. Jones missed it. Duncan ran it down. Now the trap in the corner again, but they're going to get Buford reaching in. He didn't agree with it. Earlier in the game, that might have been a call that you said, nah, I don't know. But at this point, it's pretty much moot. That's where you got to be real strong with the ball. And that trap, if you're the offensive player, you get on your heels, you're dead. You've got to keep low, keep that ball with the elbows tucked around it in that triple threat position where you can still move and do what you need to. Once you get on your heels offensively, the defense has you. Chris Haynes coming into the ball game now for the Tigers. And Anthony Hardaway, who will have better nights, comes in. Or leaves, I should say. Vaughn outside, won't go. Madlock got it back, switched hands and couldn't get that either. Vaughn the offensive voice for the jump ball. Vaughn has been the bright spot offensively for the Tigers with 19 points in the game. 
He came in averaging just under 20 from the two games prior to this in the Great Midwest Tournament. But he just didn't get any help from uh, Anthony Hardaway, who had a tough first half and got settled with some foul trouble. Great pass from Nelson and the slam from Blunt. Cincinnati had been struggling the last few games. I mean, there's a quick steal right there. But that was just a perfect trap, and that exit was fouled, I believe, Smith. And that's why you got to protect the ball. You can't relax against that double team. And Cincinnati thrives on that pressure. When they trap you, you kill your dribble, you take away the options. Number 20. They get in the passing lanes, and they make you panic. They have turned this one into a rock. 18-point lead now. And Van Exel will go to the free throw line. Memphis State is over the limit. Can Chris the Haynes picks it up. Now watch, he's on his heel. He's leaning back on his heel. Tried to come, but it's too late now. Once you lean back, the defense has a chance to move in. And Van Exel, with a nice strip, he'll get a couple of free throws. Foul with Madlock reaching in, and Van Exel converts. Now also, once you see a player in a trap, you must come to the ball. Just like a wide receiver when the quarterback's in trouble, come to the passer. Same thing in basketball. For Memphis State, 55, Anthony Douglas. So, sister Ciara getting a pretty good birthday present out of Atlanta. Duncan. Brother Nick, has had another nice game. Duncan will leave for Larry Finch, and there'll be another day for Memphis State, and that day will come sooner rather than later, as they expect to get an invitation to the tournament. And I think deserving of one. This is going to be a team to contend with, I think, in the next couple of years. Got a very good young nucleus in terms of Vaughn and Hardaway, Billy Smith, and Anthony Douglas also back. So you got a lot of guys that played a lot of minutes this year back next year. And I think this is a team that a lot was expected early on. Really didn't get out of the gates as quickly as a lot of people would have liked. But the last half of the season have played their best basketball. With Bob Huggins' team, well, they've been pretty good all year long. This has been a very underrated Cincinnati team at the start of the year, but certainly getting the respect that they deserve here in the last uh, half of the season. Tony one hand, the moment. Matlock at the free throw line now. His team down by 20. who has given Bob Huggins some very good minutes tonight, replacing Nelson. This is a deep Cincinnati team. They've got nine guys that have played in all 28 ball games this year. I was just going to say, almost everybody who comes out of the game, you can say something nice about it. Nelson leaves. He didn't play a lot of minutes, but he had a couple of good passes. That lob pass just a couple of moments ago. He helped out. Martin has been a huge force on both ends. When you got guys that don't worry about stats and just worry about the, the win and how to get it done collectively, good things are going to happen. You can see that at the Cincinnati Ball Club. They're not worried about individual statistics. They just try to play hard, and normally that means a win. Well, he's the J.C. Player of the Year out of Rancho Santiago in California. Yeah. Why do I feel like I've had 18 J.C. players of the year? <laughs> well, they've got eight uh, on this spare cat roster, so they've got their share. Smith backs it in. In Cincinnati, they could be patient, just run the offense over and over. They're playing against the clock right now. Crowd wanted to turn over there. Not going to get it. Got to be within five feet to have that count started. When you see the official with his hands to his side, that means he's not close enough to be in the guarding position. You can with a good look. Can't get the three. That would be about the only thing that Cincinnati has not done well tonight is shoot the three. Pop Huggins still very intense, encouraging his players on right in front of us. Axel is on the side of the line, trying to save it. He draws a round of applause from his coach. Hardaway comes back into the game, and so does Billy Smith. And we got a timeout with 322 remaining in the ball game. It is all Cincinnati in the second half. They lead by 16, 68, 52. Next for the conference championship. Right now, let's get back to Barry and John. 
Thank you, John. 16-point game here. Cincinnati really showing its class. And class may be an operable word with Cincinnati. A lot of upperclassmen on this team. In fact, even a lot may, may be understating it. Exclusively upper class of the 11 guys that made the trip. They're all junior and senior. And you see 14 on the overall roster uh, are upperclassmen. What that does, it means recruiting is going to be very important in the years to come. Not one sophomore, not one freshman on the traveling roster that is here at the Great Midwest Tournament. It also talks about experience. Even the junior college players that make the transfer, they've already had a couple years collegiate play under their belts. Yeah, but it is interesting, as we said earlier, there are seven new bodies, so even though, even though they are all upperclassmen, it is not an experienced team in terms of playing together. And that's why the coaching job that Bob Huggins and his staff have done this year even more impressive. Sometimes it's hard to corral that much new talent into a cohesive unit that can go out and play well night in and night out. Well, Bob doesn't seem to think he's got this one yet. That's right. If you looked at the Coach Huggins, you, weren't, you wouldn't be sure about the outcome. So Vaughn at the free throw line. 3-12 left, 16-point game, Bearcats. Pretty good first year, though, for the great Midwest Conference. 16 league and five of those teams uh, should be in postseason play. Certainly three NCAA tournament participants. Possibly a fourth, if you believe in the computer rankings and, and all that. Uh, possibly a case for Gene Bartow and his UAB Blazers with 20-plus wins on the year. Certainly, I think Marquette uh, deserving uh, of an NIT berth. Yeah, this tournament has actually been a very competitive tournament. Almost all the games have been pretty close. Marquette gave Cincinnati a very tough struggle uh, till about the eight-minute mark in the semifinals last night. Finally, they ran out of gas, and I think that's somewhat uh, what happened with Memphis State here tonight. Just couldn't go the full 40 minutes against Cincinnati. That's a credit to the Bearcats. They really wear you down. And to be fair... DePaul, well, it was a depleted DePaul team that Memphis State beat. They had a couple of injuries, and they still played Memphis State pretty hard. That was a five-point game well into the second half. They'll try to use the clock now with the Bearcats. Eight seconds on the shot clock now. They give it up to Buford in the corner for three and a one go. Everything but finished, but now they get a new 45. Martin with another good offensive rebound. It's just been one of those nights. The Bearcats really have done a good job at the offensive glass. They've battled strong inside, and it's been uh, the multiple opportunities that Cincinnati has enjoyed. They've been a difference here in the second half. So Jones will go to the free throw line. Jones has been another factor in this game. Well, we were talking earlier about the great Midwest and what a terrific first year it has been. Look at these conference rankings. These are by USA Today and Sagarins, both of which are great sources for the NC2A. So the Big 8, the Big 10, the ACC, and then the great Midwest. And that's why if you're UAB, that's a strong case uh, for them getting a chance to get in the NCAA tournament. Those as we mentioned, that's one of several different uh, computer services that the NCAA Selection Committee will use, and the strength of schedule and all that gets formulated, and I guess it kicks it out to who the 64 teams should be, exclusive of those that have already earned uh, the automatic bid via winning the conference tournament. Yeah, what it really comes down to, of course, is they've got to select 30 teams. That's right. A loft balance jumper by Smith is up and good. And the Great Midwest Conference, not one of those conferences with an automatic berth here tonight, although, as, as we've talked, both these teams will be in the NCAA tournament, I believe. And the trap still doing its job. Game for all intent is one. And it caused another turnover here. Well, you can't give up because, again, there's more basketball to be played for both these teams, so you want to keep, keep it going, trying to build on something for later on. Yeah, both these teams do a pretty good job on the trap, and that was Memphis State. You've seen Cincinnati's all night long. Twelve-point game with a minute and 28 seconds, and decision not really in doubt at this point. 
Although Memphis State has made a mini run. And Cincinnati can just spread the offense, roll it over and over, take some time off the clock. That's exactly what they're doing. Blunt gets along the baseline, kick out to Jones down the lane, will go. Hardaway pulls up the three. Scores. And a timeout with 48 seconds left. They got it down to a nine-point game. Yeah, that's three possessions, so theoretically enough time. It's a big basket by Hardaway. It makes it a three-possession game. You got to challenge the inbounds pass, try to come up with a steal, and then you got to put the Bearcats on the line. But that's not an area that they shoot particularly well. And a reminder that coming up next, the WAC championships in Fort Collins, Colorado. It'll be UTEP and BYU in that final. That's right after we jump off the track here. Here it is a nine point game with 48 seconds remaining. Larry Finch still trying to find a combination that'll get him three three point shots while managing to shut out Cincinnati in the last 48 ticks. shooting situation for both teams. Neither team has reached the 10th foul mark. That's something that does bode well for Larry Finch. The guys that will shoot it from three-point range will be Hardaway and Billy Smith are your primary weapons for the perimeter. You see what Bob Huggins and his group have done? Got to go back to 62-63 to find a better Cincinnati ball club. And interestingly enough, that was not Oscar Robertson's era. We were talking about that earlier. That was the Paul Hogue era. I'll take your word for it, Barry. <laughs> what a pretty good big man who <laughs> played in the NBA for a few years, Paul Hogue. But you're right. Uh, the big O got him close, but did not win any NCAA titles. Uh, the Bearcats went back-to-back -back and lost in that third to make it three in a row. But they had a great run there in the late 50s and early 60s. And this new Cincinnati team, the team that you really have to consider. Now, they're going to be a powerhouse in this conference, and it's a tough conference. Today, being the pressure, now you got a foul. No more time to waste. Got to go after the ball, though. Can't take an intentional foul. Good ball movement. They're not giving them a chance to foul. Finally, Hardaway gets a hand on the ball. Still no call. And finally, Smith reaches in. You can see that's almost 15 seconds that ran off the clock. When that ball comes in, you don't get the steal. Then you got to put the man on the line. That's the 19th foul on Memphis State, so this will be the last one and one for Cincinnati. The last time they had the pressure of having to hit the front end to get the back end. It'll be Van Exel at the line, 66% free throw shooter on the year. And that's really all he needed to do was not come up empty. Nothing but net that time for Nick Van Exel. Got some both. And now it's pretty much academic. Smith for three. And you for the rebound. And a foul on the other Smith. No choice, you gotta take your chance from the three-point area. You miss it, then you gotta go for the quick steal and then the foul. And just hope that the Bearcats will leave the door open by not converting here. Well, the Bearcats uh, in position to be the first champion in the Great Midwest Conference Tournament. And again, you emphasize a team that you really would rather not see in the first round. Uh, a little bit of dejection on the bench of Memphis State, but as we said, they will have it tomorrow. Well, they played well in this tournament. They had a solid first-round win over UAB, and then the Larry Finch's troops broke the DePaul jinx. They had lost both games to DePaul this year, and again, DePaul somewhat depleted. Uh, David Booth not at 100 percent, and they've had some injury problems. Joey Meyer, they're another team that'll be in the NCAA tournament. We saw a dejected Larry Finch on the sidelines. They miss another three. Larry's been feeling that he's not getting the best of it from the officials. That. David Vaughn especially has been nailed for some fouls that maybe as he grows both in stature and in class, that won't happen anymore. He likened it, as a matter of fact, to Alonzo Mourning. To the studio now.
John Sondra. All right, Barry, we just want to remind everyone that coming up next, we will crown yet another champion, Gary Tross from BYU. Marlon Maxey waiting from UTEP. They're up next from the MAC. So we'll get you out to Fort Collins in just a little bit. 13 seconds remaining in this one. The WAC, you and I both have spent a lot of time out there. That's a good basketball conference. They get a lot of notoriety or publicity, but a lot of good basketball played out there. Yeah, very good. BYU and BYU and UTEP, interesting matchup. I think that's quick against big. Don Haskin, the, the bear, back in it once again. And you're right, the, the big guys for BYU battling inside. That's coming up right after us. Nice pass that time again. And Buford somehow got down. Even he didn't believe it. Stunt's going right for you. It all goes right. And Buford creates another steal. And that's kind of a fitting ending to all of this. As a look at the final scoreboard, shows the Cincinnati Bearcats, the great Midwest Conference champions, they beat Memphis State 75 to 63, and Bob Huggins has done a masterful job. A wrap for us. For John Albright, I'm Barry Tompkins. Now to John Saunders.